And we're back. Okay, 19th century lighting innovations. We just talked about gaslight. We have not gotten rid of the open flame. Let's keep going. The next big thing in stage illumination is limelight. This is why we say in the limelight, because limelight is a thing that we use in the theater starting in the 19th century. Limelight is also known as calcium limelight. It's also known as Drummond light. So you might run into it in either of those terms. Drummond, because it was invented by a Scotsman named Thomas Drummond in, in 1816. Drummond was a uh, surveyor. Uh, he was also an inventor of all kinds of interesting things. He also became a politician. If you want to know more about Thomas Drummond, I strongly encourage you to look him up. He's a super cool person. Um, but he invented this form of illumination because he needed, as a surveyor working out on the land in Scotland and also in Ireland, uh, he needed a way to create a consistent, strong light that he could see a lot a, a, uh, from uh, a, a, a distance, from a far distance, because surveyors are plotting uh, and mapping the land. They use fixed points. A strong light will provide the kind of fixed point he needs. So he experiments and innovates and invents and comes up with a new way to generate illumination. Uh, what he comes up with, uh, I know as you look at this, you think, why is anybody doing this for the theater? I'll get to that. It is a very fair question. Um, he uh, invents this, this uh, technique of using gas, a cylinder of compressed hydrogen and a cylinder of compressed oxygen, and creating a flame, uh, oxyhydrogen flame, that is then directed at a column of lime or calcium oxide. That lime will then become incandescent. That's what happens when you heat up a chunk of lime. It becomes incandescent. It emits a very bright, brilliant white light. It's also a fairly mellow light for its brilliance. It has a, a softness to it, uh, but it creates a strong light source that is very brilliant. So here you can see an example of what it looks like if we uh, direct that oxyhydrogen flame to a piece of lime. If you then put a hood with a mirror reflector on it to direct and control that light, you can point it at a stage and you've got yourself a light source. Now deep within there, there's still a flame, right? We still have a flame. We're still using gas. We have not eliminated open, uh, well, flames from theater illumination. It's a little bit further you know, one step back in the light source, it's pointed at a lime uh, column, which then produces the light, but still we have open flame. It, it's not uh, everything we're looking for yet in a solution, but it's really cool and it's really bright. It's also kind of expensive to operate. Um, here you can see how it was often achieved in um, the, the stage. This is a, a illustration from the 1870s it's going to get adopted into theater use in the 1830s, all right? So this is after it's been around for a while. Um, and they've come up with sort of a system for reliably using uh, limelight backstage. What they would do is you had to have two people involved. You had to have somebody who was directing that limelight towards the stage, um, moving it as necessary, and somebody who is in charge of manipulating the weight that is on the bellows to manage the pressure of the gas. If you don't have this um, weight managed well, then you can have an explosion. And accidents were not uncommon. So you need a lot of labor to pull off limelight, and you need expertise. Someone has to be also constantly adjusting that block of lime so that the flame is always hitting a fresh surface for the light to be consistent. Um, yes, to have somebody managing the pressure, somebody moving the limelight, somebody kind of checking the gas. Uh, so it's not a, a simple way to create illumination, but it was very cool. Uh, we know that by the 1850s, limelight is being widely used in theater in Europe, the UK, and the United States. Its benefits? Well, it gives a mellow but still brilliant light source, which is very nice. 
Uh, it's much brighter than candlelight or gaslight. It's most useful for effects. So they use it for sunlight, they use it for moonlight. If you, if you rewind a second and you look at that illustration from the previous slide, in the bottom corner it says moonbeams. That's what the illustrator from the 19th century called that picture because they used limelight to create a moon effect or a, a sun effect. You also could use it for general illumination as needed. But here's what they mostly did. Mostly, theaters kept gaslight for general illumination and then installed a few limelights for specials and for spots, for follow spots in particular. Um, limelight becomes a way to do this thing that we now really like to do called a follow spot. The light was so intense that they could place the instrument in the auditorium behind the audience, direct it with a hood and reflector, and it could be on a swivel and it could move, and you could do, um, create the, the effect we know um, as a follow spot. So it, it ends up being ideal for follow spots and really useful for effects like sunlight and moonlight especially when partnered with gaslight for the general illumination. You need gas to work both of them. So if a theater could do one, it could do the other once everything was installed. So what we get to at the end of the 19th century is most theaters having gas. So limelight was also used for nighttime illumination of battlefields. Uh, during the Siege of Charleston, the Civil War, the Union Navy focused limelights on Fort Sumter during their attack. So limelight, the thing that Drummond created, gets adopted by theater, yes, but it is not exclusively the domain of theater. It stays in other very non-theater theater applications, such as battlefield illumination for nighttime battles. It's also used for nighttime illumination for other very special uh, circumstances, such as massive building projects. And we know that limelight was used in the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, the workmen were uh, illuminated in their, in their nighttime work and in, in sort of uh, dark circumstances like shorter days in the winter or bad weather. They were illum provided illumination by limelight on the caissons while they were uh, doing all the construction work for the Brooklyn Bridge. So limelight has broader, wider applications even beyond theater. How cool is that? All right, but still, we need something that doesn't have open flame. Stick with me. Meet me in the next lecture. We're going to get rid of the open flame. I'll see you there.